What is good, you two? Quinway basketball analysis ending the weekend. We're going to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks instantly losing to the Utah Jazz. They was able to get a lead and they was able to maintain it throughout the entire game. While the Bucks fought, gave themselves a chance, really try to put themselves in a predicament where they can still steal a game and win a game. The Jazz was too much. Shout out to Donovan Mitchell, Spider Mitchell. Dance and had a blast on the di- on the Bucks defense. Twenty eight points, efficient. Ten of eighteen from the field, efficient. Four or nine from three. Literally was able to do whatever, however he wanted to get it done against the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. Whether it was hitting a three, hitting the mid range, getting to the paint, scooping it up off the backboard. They had no answer for Donovan Mitchell. You also got to give credit to guys like Conley was able to show why they needed him, being able to hit the jump shots, being able to hit the floaters, being able to keep the game at a a simple pace. Also, you got to look at Bogdanovich. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but made timely shots that kept them afloat. Same with Donovan Mitchell and Conley. Clarkson didn't shoot the ball at all well from 3-0-7, 6-17 from the field, but he was aggressive. He was looking for a shot, attacking the defense, trying to find holes in the defense, even though he took some tough ones and forced some up. The Bucs really couldn't answer anything that the Jazz had to do. Even if you look at Gobert, not a dominant game. He got some key blocks that kept the lead where it needed to be. He had four total for the game. Nine of 13, I mean, nine points, 13 rebounds. He was a force enough, you know, orchard some shots, blocked some shots. Gobbled up boards. You know when you got Giannis down, it's going to be tough to grab a lot of boards. Just because he's athletic, he's going to be in that paint, you know, offensively and defensively. He had 25. Shot a lot of threes. Three of 11. Didn't make really none of them because he only made three out of 11. Um, Also suffered because he didn't get to the free throw line. They walled him off, kept him out of the paint. They had him at the perimeter a lot more. And he lived there and died there as he only was 10 of 20 from the field and struggled from everywhere else off the, over the court. Also had two blocks, two steals. Did all he could. You know, seven rebounds is low for Giannis. You, you, you very rarely see him get rebounds that small. He did was able to contribute six assists. You look at Tenassus, he's a role player. He's solid. Um, a guy that's going to have a motor, a guy that's going to put effort, um, but only really gave you 10 points, nine rebounds. You don't expect him to have big games or big nights especially offensively because that's not his style, that's not his game, that's not what he never or has been. Um, And he showed that tonight in 32 minutes. Didn't really have a huge overall impact offensively. Grayson Allen finally had a solid to better game than what what people thought that he would, but he was able to contribute 18 points, six rebounds, five of 10 from three, six of 14 from the field. A decent game for him, you know, just hit the open shots hit your threes when they're there, and he was able to produce and do that tonight. That's his role. That's his job. And just be a switchable slash solid defender, and he can do those things, and that's why they brought him in, and that's what he was able to do tonight. George Hill made one three that you know gave them some danger, but overall 11 points. You don't expect anything huge or crazy from George Hill. You just want him to give you some solid minutes and some decent defense, and he was able to produce, you know, to that certain extent tonight. Pat Connaughton only had one out of five threes. One of his threes kept him within single digits, but it quickly got back up to double digits. Didn't really have a big, huge night defensively. Really was hit or miss offensively, as you can see, two or seven from the field. Also, really didn't give you the game that you needed um, from him when guys are out. Same with George Hill. Robinson, nine. Um, Jay, uh, he, the small forward, two points. And then Bobby Portis was rusty, um, but he came in and gave all he had, and that's all you can really ask for. I'm giving you 15 and five, six of 15 from the field. Only made one out of five threes. But at the end of the day, he only played 19 minutes, and that's a great production for the value and the minutes that he gave you, especially when you look at the fact that he wasn't playing that much, didn't really have that much time to really play a NBA game and a huge NBA role in a long time and he was still able to give you a lot more than what the starters was able to give you and he only played 19 minutes and they played way more minutes and he was able to produce better than a lot of the starters tonight but this is about what you expect from the Bucks right now no Middleton 
no Drew Holiday. The defense is going to suffer. The perimeter players are going to be able to score and really tear up the defense. Also, when you look at the fact that Giannis is limited offensively, we know he's not the greatest mid-range shooter. We know he's not the greatest three-point shooter. He can hit a three, as you've seen tonight. He can hit a mid-range, especially if you give him the space and give him chances to set his feet and get his rotation and his rhythm going. He can hit a couple shots, but we know he's not a dominant perimeter play player. We know he can't kill you definitely from the perimeter, but that's the favor of you, Jazz. You know, keep Giannis out the paint. Even if you surround them with shooters, you got Big Bear down there protecting the realm, contesting shots, and really just making it tough, not only for Giannis, but everybody else on the team. You never want to live off perimeter shots, um, especially when you don't have a team that's great at creating perimeter shots and a team that even struggles sometimes to hit perimeter shots throughout games, even if the playoffs. And when you have two of your best perimeter players out and you're replacing them with role players that have never been great, or amazing, you're going to struggle. You know, you got somebody that can score from the perimeter and get hot. You got a superstar player that you're watching. That's not Giannis' game. That's not Drew Holiday's game. And that's not really none of the players on this team game, even Middleton. Middleton can get hot, but he can also be streaky, and he also can be solid, just like we seen last game, and didn't even play this game. So Giannis did all he could, try, really produced, you know, a decent game for himself. But... The Jazz, this was a game that they had to win. He went out there. I mean, they went out there and really just executed. Even when the Bucks made runs, even when the Bucks tried to make it close, they didn't panic. They didn't try to do anything out of the normal. They didn't really try to do anything crazy or mind-blowing. They just stuck to the basics, get a pick and roll, get a switch, get to the basket, get to your spot, and just try to make sure you can get, get to it and knock it down. And that's all the Jazz did. That's all Donovan Mitchell did. And even when the Bucks try to scare them, they just continue to do the same thing over and over again. When you don't have any great perimeter defenders and you don't really have no real threats in the paint, this is what happened. You know, a team will eat you alive. And no Lopez either. That hurts too. But the Bucks, this is a game that you want to win. You don't want to get a record where you should be at the top and now you're at the bottom. Now you got to go on a win streak to get back to the top. You don't want to start like this. The Bucks are champions. They want to prove that they are the best team. They want to prove that they're the team to beat. And they showed that game one. Now they just have been all over the place and just been a mess. You know, this is not the start that you want the Bucks to have. A lot of people looked at Giannis as a person in the conversation for best player in the league. And he hasn't been that to me this season. And he hasn't been that even before this season, honestly. But the wins isn't helping this case because now they're at a bad record. And the fact that he has to do more and more and more and the team getting worse and worse and worse because of injuries just shows you that this team could be in for trouble and they could be fighting an uphill battle, you know, to get back in the win column and literally be at the top of the East. This is a team that, if healthy, they can be the number one team in the Eastern Conference going into the playoffs, but that just hasn't been the case. The problem is when you bring in a lot of young players and you're relying on a lot of older players, things like this happens where you're going to have a lot of minor nagging and long-term injuries that can really hurt your chemistry because they have some new pieces and new guys that they're trying to integrate, but it also hurt the fact that you're trying to all get on the same page and just bulldoze the league like people thought that they would, especially after game one. And now they have to get everybody back healthy. Then they have to get everything back figured out. Then they got to go back to dominating the game, which they're capable of and we know that they can do. So the Bucks, another tough loss, another game that got to be frustrating for the Bucks and what they're trying to do, which is trying to be a champ, back-to-back -back champs. It's still possible. There's no mind-blowing team right now in the league. Even the Jazz tonight, didn't look great, didn't look amazing, but they'll take the W because that's their job as players, and they was able to still get it done tonight, even though they should and they were supposed to, and they made it a little closer than it had to be. They still got the win, and that's the goal of a player each and every time they lace it up to play basketball, and the Jazz took advantage of the Bucks having a bad, you know, health night, and they got the W. So that's all that really mattered. And, and you got to give credit to the Jazz getting the job done at the end of the day, even though it wasn't amazing or pretty. 
they still got the job done. You got to give them credit for that. But the Bucks, you know, this just this, this got to be a nightmare right now for the Bucks fan just because y'all was feeling yourselves last year for accomplishing the goal that they haven't accomplished in so many years that it didn't even seem like it was a reality. And now it's the truth that they are champions and I was there on ring night and it was just a beautiful thing for them to see it. But this is not the season that you want to have coming off of a championship where people really didn't care. People didn't really cover it. People didn't really go crazy over it. And people still doubted them coming into this season. And to have the record that they have now and the health concern that they have already and it's only the start of the season. But remember, they still got over 70 games to go. And they already having a lot of these problems early in the season. Just imagine what they got to go through for the rest of the season. This isn't a good look. This isn't a good sign. And this could be a cause for concern if you're a Bucks fan and you're trying to repeat and get another title in Milwaukee. But, you know, it's not over. Let's not overreact. Let's not go crazy. But we still have to look at the facts. We still have to look at the health. And we still have to look at this team has a lot of things they still have to put together. But it's a long season. We'll see where they at. Going into the playoffs, remember, people didn't have this team as a team that's going to win it all going into the playoffs last year, and they still was able to get it done. So we have to give them credit for that. And we can't overlook the champion, especially the heart of a champion. This team play hard, this team competes, and this team just haven't been able to put everybody on the court, which has been the reason why they have got off to this terrible start. You just hope that this doesn't continue throughout the season or even when it matters most in the playoffs. But it is something to look at. It is something to notice now because it could be something that happens. We've seen that with the Nets. They showed them signs two years ago, then they killed them again in the playoffs. So this is something that could recur. This is something that could come back. And this is something that could hurt them from being champions. And it's just the truth. You don't want it to happen. You don't want to believe it can happen. But you still have to look at the facts. You still have to look at the health. You still have to look at the fact that is a reality right now and something you should be concerned about if you're a Bucks fan. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your night. Quinn Wade Basketball Announcer signing out. Hopefully, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Other than that, do y'all thing. Hoopers, keep hooping, and I'm gone.